In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. Previously on Living Free Alaska, with another wind event in the forecast and our building finally up and running with heat, we make the call to finally move our motorhome inside. With that, it's time to undo all winterization efforts on the disco and pray everything goes just right with all systems so we can get parked inside for the rest of winter. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I'm looking out over the mountains here from our living room. We've got low clouds, but just perfect to frame out the mountains. We're standing here in our living room. This is a project we finished a week or so ago. We got our wood stove in and some of our stone. But uh, next step is paint. We're gonna be choosing our paint colors here this week. And uh, they'll come in, do the walls, then start on the flooring and trim. What do you think, Soph? Hmm? What do you think? Yeah, she says, don't film me. Hey. Well, it's a cobalt kind of day today. And what I mean by that is, look at all the cabinetry we got. My gosh. Shop cabinets right here. Um, Going to be assembling this stuff, putting it together, or and then arranging it inside my workshop. And, and uh, yeah, that's what we got going on. All right, so we got quite a few cabinets here. I've got uh, like two of these big tall cabinets. I actually have three of these wall cabinets. I want four, but I only got, they only have three. And then I got four of these base cabinets here. So we're gonna kind of set up something similar to this right here, over here in, in the workshop on this wall. Uh, as you can see in here, we got a big wall. It's like 20 some feet. I've got plumbing there for a sink. So we're gonna get a base, a regular sink base cabinet and put a, my work, shop sink in there and then we'll do the whole cabinet setup and in the corner where the uh in floor heat stuff is i'm going to build a, another workbench on top of that so i'll have a, a workbench in the corner extending up underneath the windows a little ways so uh we're just trying to get this stuff set up so we can get some of our trailers unloaded so i can get some of my tools so i can do other stuff um, it's been difficult not having all my stuff here with me so this is the first step. So this is our living quarters currently in the RV shop. As you can tell, we've made ourselves at home. We've gone ahead and purchased a shop couch. And uh, this is basically where we live. We basically only eat and uh, or cook and sleep in the RV. Rest of the days are spent outside, pardon the mess. But one thing we did buy is some shelving units. And once we get everything situated, we are gonna move that over into the toy shed uh, and use that for all our snow machining gear, helmets, uh, clothing, and other uh, storage solutions. It's just wide enough to work in this space. Just making stuff up as I go. I mean, why? Why not make it up as you go? No sense in doing it the right way. What are instructions for?
After getting all the cabinets assembled, it was time to head back to Home Depot and grab some prefabricated cabinets and a countertop for the workshop sink area so we could complete the space. I must say, Gary did an amazing job. He's always wanted a workshop, and I can't think of a better one to suit his needs and wants. Hi everyone, I just wanted to break into this video real quick and give you a warning. The next few minutes are gonna cover a topic of if a car hits a moose and kills it. And I just wanted to give you a heads up in case this kind of content you don't enjoy. You'll just wanna skip forward a couple of minutes. Thank you. As you can tell by now with many of our videos, Moose are a common sighting here in Alaska. They outnumber humans by far in population, and unfortunately, with that, many moose are killed on Alaskan roadways. When the snow is deep, they tend to stick to the roads, trails, and driveways, as it is easier for them to maneuver around than tromping through the deep snow. Therefore, with that, unfortunately, vehicle strikes happen especially along our highways. But the state of Alaska has an amazing program where the viable meat is not wasted and provides to both charities and families who are signed up for the Moose Roadkill program. The following is our story. Late one evening in the middle of February, our friends got a phone call from the state troopers letting her know that a moose was involved in a vehicle accident just down the highway from our houses, and that she was next on the state's moose roadkill list. With this news, we gathered our gear and headed out to the accident site. When we arrived, we found an approximately three-year-old bull who had been dispatched by the state trooper to end its suffering. We spent the next five hours getting it off the side of the highway, getting it back to their house, and dressing it and getting it hung up to prepare for harvesting of the viable meat. In all, we were able to save most of the meat except for one hindquarter and a rib cage, as that is where it took the hit from the vehicle. Two days later, we came back together as a group and helped process the meat into bulk burger, sausage, and meat sticks. In all, this moose provided over 200 pounds of meat and filled the freezers of our two families. Moose is a very common staple in a local Alaskan's diet. We can't thank our friends enough for letting us help out in this very strenuous process. We are now signed up on the moose roadkill list ourselves. Although it is sad that one of our furry friends who regularly visits our property met a tragic end his life will not be wasted and will bring happiness to our bellies. Kind of love the prime rib roast. Here we go. Garlic, thyme, rosemary, Dijon mustard, salt and pepper, slathered on the outside of the uh, prime rep roast. They went through a 24 hour plus a couple hour uh, dry brine in the refrigerator. Dry brine is just uh, pour salt all over the whole roast for 24 hours uncovered. Bye bye, see you a little bit. Beef, it's what for dinner. Moose was last night, beef tonight. down here for a little bit. Maybe a lifeline attached. I don't know what's going on. I pulled out the ranger. The ranger got stuck down here. Pulled out the ranger. And as I was pulling out the ranger, the back tires of the truck slid down that way. Up that way. On this little icy stuff. You want to explain why you're back here plowing? Well, it snowed, so I have to plow. This, this is the backyard. Yeah. Well, the house is not done yet. So we keep the perimeter of the house plowed so the contractors can come and work around the perimeter of the house. And what's happening this week or next? 
contractor coming in to work around the house. Exciting! Maybe. Yes. Woohoo! Okay, get the ranger. Oh, lordy. So I want you to just pull the winch in. Today we are going to go on a little adventure. Hopefully my one GoPro battery holds up, but if not, I got my cell phone to take footage. But we are going on a snow machine ride to go watch the Iron Dog competition. The pro class uh, start is today. So we're going to take a ride out behind our house in the swamps, down to Big Lake and watch them go by as they make their way to Nome, Alaska. It's a 2600 mile snow machine race and uh, it's a big one here. So super excited about getting out and seeing what it's all about. After our last snow machine trip up to our friend's cabin, we went on a search for a machine to tide us over for the rest of the season while we waited for our snow-checked Polaris snow machines to arrive. We happened to find a Ski-Doo Expedition 600 Ace two-passenger machine on Facebook Marketplace for a pretty good deal. So we went ahead and purchased it, and now we have a third sled available in case one of ours breaks down or if we have guests who would like to go riding with us. All right, we are t where we are gonna watch the race go by. We're on the rail bed at one of the bridges and uh, they're gonna come down the trail right here and on their way to Nome. He's got a buzz. Yeah. It's probably the troopers. Come on, come oh, on. stay down, stay down. <laughs> Moon him. Nice. Moon him. <laughs> Okay, here comes the second team. You can hear them. Oh, there they come. They just got past. So 
during the iron dog year they uh, they have a staggered start so they start the sleds every two minutes apart so they're so the teams aren't backed up on each other um, we've already had seen one team pass the other pass the team so like i think it was team number five passed team number four so they came through first um, that gives them a chance to give them space on the on the trail so we're not all all uh bunched up in places Well, that concludes our first ever Iron Dog. It was a lot of fun, and I've heard they should be back in about a week. So, uh, yeah, something to check out online, follow along, and uh, we'll do it again next year. All right, it's time to head back to the house and enjoy the rest of our Saturday. So our goal today is to unbury this trailer and we want to move it over to the house with our truck so we can get some items out of it. The workshop is ready to be um, filled with tools and I would like some of our furniture to uh, help pick with color decor. So that's today's goal. Crossing fingers, we get it out. do with this so this snowstorm the weather this winter has been crazy okay moment of truth We're going anywhere. It's just a sheet of ice. The ice underneath in the driveway. Yeah. Huh? Two three. Yeah, you need gravel or cat litter or something. Yep. Sand, two bags. Right. See what that does for us. Ace is place. That wasn't Ace, that was three bears. Oh, you went to the grocery store. Well, Ace didn't have anything. Wow. Yeah, so three bears it is. Three bears for the win. Uh -huh. they, they seem, for some reason, they seem to. Pull off winds quite a bit. Well, they've got some good backing. Yeah, Costco. <laughs> All right, we got a bag of sand. Put it underneath the tires a little bit. Maybe that'll give us some traction. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, we got a neighbor, Mike. Uh, he might be able to give me a yank. A little bit more pull. So we'll see what happens. It's just, it's just the ice is getting to us, and uh, maybe the snow on top of the ice and the sand will help get us out. All right. We'll see what happens. Not. <laughs> I'm a betting woman. This isn't gonna work. Nope. Ah. 
I was a betting woman and I won. Watch here. <laughs> Mike to the rescue. Hello. The bungee. You get it? Yeah. Yep. The Ford is pulling the Dodge. Here we go. She is out of hibernation. Two of those. <laughs> Matt's recovery rope. Recovery rope. Yep. <laughs> Makes it so much easier. Oh yeah. Woohoo! It's gonna be Christmas all over again. <laughs> Hi, Spirit. What are you doing? Well, as you can see, we did get our trailer over to the shop and we are in the midst of a pretty good snowstorm. So this is going to get interesting. I might admit that I've already fallen once and uh, Gary just about biffed it. So uh, it's pretty treacherous at the moment, but we're going to start offloading our stuff. It's been packed since last winter so it's kind of exciting to at least have access to some of our belongings so, long distance moves they're never easy next time on living free alaska we give an update on all the happenings in and around our ultimate shop house build during the month of March of 2022. And we get spring fever, so we head out to clear off the boat in preparations of some future fishing trips in Prince William Sound. As always, we thank you for joining us here on Living Free Alaska, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks again for watching as we catch up the vlog to real time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post again. And lastly, we hope you'll join us again next time here on Living Free Alaska.